so thank you very much, Toki. Uh, thank you for the Keynes Fund. We are very grateful for the Keynes Fund for support. Uh, this is, let me time this. So, uh, this is joint work with Shria, uh, who is the economist and economics of religion, and Chris Rao, uh, who just spoke before, and two very nice PhD students from our faculty, Christian and Maria. Okay. Uh, so, what we try to do here. So the question that we, you know, the motivation that we, we have is the following. People, they face uh, different risks, right? So people, individuals, they face different shocks, like a labor shock or a health shock. Uh, and people try to insure against the shocks, uh, but there is imperfect insurance in life, as we know. Uh, and the question is whether religion can be a mechanism, a channel that people ensure against the shocks, right? So maybe people are trading off, say, the hardship that they have in life for, say, a better afterlife. Or maybe they are going to get, you know, uh, community support from the church if they invest in, 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 in the church, right, in the community. So we are trying to actually try to understand this. And besides that, we are trying to understand I think a very hard question to, to address, which is do religion or religiosity, they affect individual's decision, right? I say this hard because it's very hard to disentangle this from some personality, you know, traits that can be correlated with religion. So this project basically has uh, three parts. One part is an empirical part. We implement a survey, which I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, just in few slides, uh, about, you know, 1,000 questionnaires in the city of Rio de Janeiro. And then we have a standard, say, structural model of decision of individuals about, you know, consumption, uh, investment, and, and labor supply. And we are trying to, you know, embed religion in, in this type of model to try to understand how religion can affect outcomes. And basically, we try to estimate the parameters of the model to be consistent with what we observe in the data from Rio de Janeiro, right? So if you think about Brazil, so this is in the city of Rio de Janeiro, so it's, you know, uh, in Brazil. Uh, so this is, you know, from the world value surveys, not our research. And if you think about the country, say in 98, Brazil was the largest Catholic nation in the world, right? So 18 about 80 to 90% of the population in the 98s would say they would be Catholics, right? But that's changed a lot over time. And there is a new census coming out and the rumor is that basically the number of Catholics is going to be less than 50% of the population now. And concomitant with the, you know, with the fall of Catholics in the population, there was, you know, the rise of evangelicals, right? And it's not that, you know, there was a falling Catholicism in Brazil and religiosity uh, fall is quite the opposite. If you think about religiosity, it's actually rising. If you think about, say, uh, church participation and people saying they go more than one time uh, uh, to the church in a week, uh, this actually has been rising over time, right? So there was, you know, kind of fall in Catholicism, there was a rise in, in the Protestant and evangelicals and also rise in, 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 say, church participation. And these two pictures, I think, that I'm going to show reflects, a, you know, uh, deep inside what we have in mind. So on this left picture is the St. Bad's Monastery. This is where I attend school uh, when I was a kid. Uh, and the second one on the right is the Temple of Solomon in Sao Paulo that was founded in 2014 and supposed to be a replica of the first temple of the Jewish. Uh, and uh, it's a huge, you know, uh, temple. And on the second picture, you can see, you know, two typical kind of mass that you have, say, in St. Bede's Monastery and, and the Temple of Solomon. So St. Bede's, you know, it's, uh, I think if you go to Portugal, to Spain or, or Italy, I, I think it's going to be the same kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, picture that you observe, say, in Catholic church. Uh, so in some way losing, uh, you know, number of uh, people falling. 
And then in the second picture, you can see a much more, say, lively uh, service uh, and people, they go there, you know, uh, they can be cured, you know, by the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so the question that we try to address is whether, you know, if you participate in this type of, you know, church, whether you participate in some other type of church, uh, whether you know outcomes in your life are going to be different and whether or not you behave differently. So that's basically what we have in mind. And in order to do that, we implemented a, you know, a very rich, I would say, survey, our questionnaire. So there are two waves of the survey. We have the second wave just arrived. Uh, and the data that I'm going to show is just the first wave what's done uh, a year ago, or a little bit more than a year ago. And this was collected, as I said, in the city of Rio de Janeiro and has, you know, information about social economic uh, uh, outcomes of individual, but not only that has, you know, kind of a percept different perception about risk, like uh, the risk of losing a job, the, the health risk that they face, if they are, you know, uh, in a very, uh, in, in an area that's uh, the crime rate is very high and so on and so on, right? And then there is question now about also the perception that the individuals they have about, you know, how they are going to be insured against this, this risk uh, and so on. So this was implemented with the support of the Institute for Religion Study in the Rio de Janeiro. And we are very, we are very happy with the way that they did. Uh, so this is, you know, the city of Rio de Janeiro, that's Bahia de Guanabara, I think it's very famous, uh, and this is basically, say, Copacabana, and this is, you know, a geolocation of the interviews uh, that uh, uh, was, we did, right? Uh, so this was, those are the kind of the richest area of Rio, and, you know, those are not so so nice area of, of the city. And you can see that spread out, you know, throughout the Rio de Janeiro. And, uh, and we also have geolocation about, you know, information, the crime rate of the area. So we can correlate this with uh, risk perception and the way that people participate in religion activities. I'm going to show uh, some, you know, very preliminary, as I said, uh, results about this survey. Those are only correlation, I'm not trying to make any causal inference here. Uh, so the first one is uh, kind of uh, community support. It's, the idea here is whether individuals, if they face, for instance, some job problems, if they lose the job, whether they are going to get community support or not. Right? And here is a principal component of religion investment. There are many ways that people invest, can invest in religion. They can, you know, they can go to church. They can actually make donation to church. Uh, they can pray. So this is kind of a principal component of religion investment. As in, and as you can see, this is highly correlated with any kind of, you know, uh, community support that individuals perceive if they have, you know, some health issue, they are going to receive this, you know, support from the church. The same thing about the job, same thing about education, child care, psychological problems, and, and you know, uh, and if they're going to receive outside help, uh, help or not. There is no difference here. Once you control from, for this religion investment, there is no difference in the Pentecostals, the Protestant and the Roman Catholics here. But I think something interesting is the second table that I'm going to show. This is uh, basically the dependent variable is, you know, if people pray or not, the time that they pray, uh, if they attend religious service, you know, they go many times to church, if they do some voluntary work and donation to church, right? So this is kind of a very different ways that you can invest in religion. And as you can see here, for instance, if people, they think they have a very high probability of a job loss, they, you know, in general, there is a correlation with donation that they make. If they face, if they think they're going to face, you know, a large probability, uh, probability of large expenditure shock, they also have some donation, right? And, and again, this is uh, uh, correlated with, you know, religiosity, right? So this is highly correlated with religiosity. And, and here is interesting that you can see many difference 
uh, between among, say, the Pentecostal, the Protestant, and the Roman Catholics, right? So you can see that, you know, the Pentecostals, they pray more, uh, they attend more religion service, you know, they go more to church, they, more, they make the more donations and so on, right? Relative, say, to the Catholics and to the people that are not religious. Right. So those are, you know, we control for a bunch of things. We also have information about age, marriage, you know, if individuals, they are married or not, number of children and so on and so on. So we control for a bunch of socioeconomic characteristics, right? So this is kind of, a, you know, the survey is just, you know, a few tables that I, I just two tables that I have shown. Uh, we actually have, a, we have a data uh, that we haven't explored yet, and uh, hopefully this is going to be done soon. So then that's the second part, we have a theoretical model, right? So the theoretical model, think about, you know, individuals, they age, you know, they, they are young, they have middle age, they are old, they make consumption decision, they make, you know, savings decision, they decide about the number of hours, leisure, and so on. And then they basically make you know, donations and the time that they pray in time or in community service. And individuals, they face very different shocks, like a transitory productive shocks, like you know, think about seeing being unemployed and employed, or education people, they have very different education, uh, and also they have different experience, right? So we try to capture many you know, dimensions that you observe. Uh, uh, in the data. So the thing is really we had to decide about how religion is going to affect decisions, right? So we have only two mechanisms here so far. You know, we have the, you, we started first with a larger model, we had health issues also, but it was much harder to solve. So we decided to, you know, start with very simple, say, uh, two mechanisms. The first mechanism is a label market outcome. The idea is that you can have, say, community support and the community support that you receive from your church uh, is basically a function of the donation that you make to the church and the time that you spend on community service on the church, right? And what this is going to affect? This is going to affect, you can have a shock in, 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 in uh, you can lose a job and what's really the probability that you're going to stay unemployed from one period to the other. And this is basically the more investment that you do, you decrease this probability that you remain unemployed. So this is one mechanism. The second mechanism that we have is an afterlife probability. So there is some beliefs. It's very hard to disentangle religion from say uh, networks effect or you know, beliefs about you know, afterlife. And this afterlife beliefs is a probability that you go to, to heaven and this probability that you go to heaven is going to be a function of this you know, the donation, the time that you pray, sorry, the time that you spend uh, in the community and basically the time uh, that you pray, right? So I don't have much time. I can show all this function, but you know, I'm not going to really show the function, but that's really basically a standard, say, consumption investment decision where we introduce this, you know, kind of uh, religion activity and how this is going to map into you know the decision of the individuals, right? So keep in mind that we have this only these two effects: the labor market effect and basically the afterlife effect. Okay, so we have the decision of the middle age, the old individual, and so on. So what we do, we have many you know parameters of the model, and we have to basically choose the parameters of the model. So what we do, we basically generate a bunch of moments uh, in, in our model and, and from the survey that we have and also, also secondary uh, uh, source, we basically try to estimate you know, the model such that the moments that we generate in the model is very close to what we observe in the data. So, I mean, I think we are doing pretty well. So Chris is, is you know, a specialist on this and he says we are doing very well. So I believe on him. So uh, this is, you know, kind of the result I'm going to show in the last minute that I have. Uh, so basically what we do here, so the solid line is people that are uh, unemployed and employed, okay? Uh, so, and, and the dashed line, uh, we shut down the community support. Suppose that there isn't any community support. So what would happen to the decision of the individuals? What you observe is that people would actually save sorry, people would save more, right? So in, in, in fact, like donation and, you know, the time, the community 
service is a work size, a mechanism of insurance. And people actually are going to consume less, right? So without this actually community support actually increase average consumption of individuals, right? And this is, can be seen basically in this table. So the, the table here we got only for these, you know, uh, individuals, so they are low educated Pentecostals. And the low educated Pentecostal, we have the benchmark, right? So that's the benchmark is, again, is very preliminary. And then we say, okay, so this is what we observe in the benchmark and say, let's, you know, turn off the community support. Let's say there is no community support for this individual. What would happen to this individual? You can say that consumption would decrease by say, you know, from three to 4% per year, right? And then we can do the same thing if there is no afterlife. So if there is no afterlife, people don't see the afterlife as something that's important, actually is the opposite. Right. So in some way, what we are showing is basically, you know, that this type of community support is really working as, as an insurance mechanism. And another thing that we show is that apparently from this counterfactual analysis that we have is that community support seems to be much more strong for, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, shaping the decision of the individuals compared to the, you know, to the afterlife mechanism. Right, so that's basically uh, what we have here. So I'm going to stop, otherwise I'm going to pass the time. I actually already passed one minute.